Hello guys, just wanted to give a brief talk on identification uh, from a very intuitive angle. So I'm going to uh, be talking about identification in an even simpler setting from what we normally is. Namely, suppose we think of a model where we have a y that is follows some distribution and we just want to estimate uh, the mean of y. Um, so I could create a y that follows a random uh, normal distribution and then what I would give to you is basically this histogram and the question of identification in that model is can you back out what the mean of y that I used was? Now I've simulated y from a standard normal so it has a mean of zero and what you can say is, let's just compute the mean of y, and this is our guess. This is not actually the mean of y I used, because I used a mean of zero. So the question of identification is not a question of finite sample. It's a question that if you had the full data set, the full population, with an infinite amount of data, would you be able to back out what the true value of that mean was? In some sense we get closer to this when we increase the number of observations and you get a very 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 fine histogram and this mean gets very very close to zero. So that's the question of identification. So let's uh, look at a, a different model here and let me create a, a script for it. Let's call it uh, lol.m. So um, let's create a some data here where um, we now think of a model where um, uh, yi is equal to some um, mu plus uh, ui where ui was normal uh, 0 comma sigma. Then we can ask can we identify sigma? So here we create the true parameters mu of 0 and the sigma of 1 u i is u is then e y is then equal to um, mu plus sigma times some normal draws and we, let's give a lot of data we, we're thinking that we're in the uh, in the full population and then what you get when you try to uh, invert this is you get basically the histogram of, of y. So this is the setting we've been in before and the question of identification in this model is can you back out what mu and sigma are if you had um, the full population? So you can estimate that by taking the mean of y and the standard deviation of y minus the mean of y as the estimate of the standard deviation and these are your guesses and the question of identification is then if this had been infinite, I'd given you an infinite amount of data, would you have been able to back that out? And yes, that's possible here. So let's create a different model here. A model in which I introduce a new parameter, gamma, which I set equal to, I don't know, 3. And then I say y is equal to mu plus gamma minus gamma and the question is, can you back out what gamma is? This is the pr true data generating process. Gamma is equal to 3. And this is what you get. You get this histogram. And here, gamma is not identified. And uh, to talk about identification, we normally talk about a criterion function uh, and, um, and, and, and a particular estimator. But to think of it in a more intuitive term, what you can say is, Suppose I were to change gamma here, set it equal to 5, and then run this thing. Then I get the exact same histogram out. If I set it equal to 100, I get the exact same histogram out. So it doesn't really affect my data what this gamma parameter is. I cannot identify it. And in some sense, you can say that what if I think that this is the true model? that there's a plus gamma and a minus gamma, and in this case, that is the true model. I have added and subtracted a gamma, but you can still not identify what that gamma coefficient is. Now, you may say this is a boring example, 
because I'm just adding and subtracting the same number. So here's just a different example. Um, suppose that I instead have a model where I have a UI and an EI. UI has uh, one variance and EI is normally distributed but has sigma 2 as its uh, variance or standard deviation. It should be squared here actually. That's right, this is n. Alright, now I'm adding two um, two, uh, two different normal error terms. Let's look at what the data looks like that you get. Here, the data looks very much like a, a normal distribution here, but if I if I go about the same way here and compute the mean, it's, it's uh, zero, or very close to zero, and uh, the standard deviation of y minus the mean of y is 2.2368. How can I back out what the two different normals that I've added were? And in fact, you cannot, because if you have two normally distributed variables with the same mean, then uh, they are actually joint, they together, the sum of them is normally distributed. So, and it turns out that if you take uh, the square root of sigma 1, squared plus sigma 2 squared, then that is the variance of these two together if you think of them as one joint normal error term. And that's all we can hope to get. And we can see that the standard deviation of y minus the mean of y is actually uh, very, very close to that, very closely estimates that joint variance. But I can't back out what these two individual error terms were, how big they were. And uh, the, the problem is that they're added together. I don't have them separately. So I could have this one be twice as big and the other one be half as big. And the, 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 the histogram looks exactly the same. The data that you'd expect to get in the population looks the same. You're not, you're not giving me, I'm not giving you any data to allow you to distinguish which part of the variation came from one error term and which came from the other. So it may be that this is the true model, and in this case, it is the true model. That is exactly how I generated the data, but you cannot back that out. That model cannot be identified from the data. So if you believe that that's the true model, you're screwed. You can't find the parameters. So what, when we do, when we, um, when we talk about identification and talk about normalizations in, in the classes, that we think about coming up with a different model, namely the one that we had uh, originally, where we just have, um, we can call this our normalized model, where we just have one error term, right? And that error term has one variance, let's call it sigma star, and that sigma star is equal to the square root of the sum of the two variances. Uh, and that model is identified. This sigma star is identified. So it's a different model. Um, and it's the one we can identify. We cannot back out from which of the two error terms uh, the observed deviation in y came from. So hopefully that clears out a little bit of the discussion about identification and normalization.